What's going on my friends? How are you? I'm wonderful. Just uh, finished lunch and a shower and uh, ready to do some more trucking until I die of old age. Uh, that's that's my long-term goal. And now you all know. I guess I can just stop making videos at this point. Now you all know. But anyways, today I want to talk about uh, something um, I'm gonna talk about entertainment trucking and what my experience was there for the people that are interested A lot of people are curious about that kind of thing. So we will talk about that. Okay I uh, wanted to get a few things out of the way as I always do before we get into the meat and potatoes of the video <clears throat> Apparently some people are very upset in the comments that I'm an owner operator at Swift Transportation. I don't know what you want me to tell you. I mean, Josh, what are you talking about? You're an owner operator. You're nothing but a glorified company driver that just makes the truck payments. And Josh, you need to shut up. You're nothing but a lease operator. Did you guys not read my pillowcase in the last video? It says right on it, Swift owner operator. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, people that argue with facts absolutely blow my mind. I don't know what everyone's so upset about. I'm. I'm sorry, I'm so amazing. I just, I don't know how to apologize for that, but, but I'm a Swift owner operator, all right? Stop being angry, God damn it! Stop being angry. And uh, one guy I wanted to uh, point out, because he was kind of funny, uh, he said, he watched that video, the last video, and he's like, man, this guy is like the, the Jim Jones of trucking, and I'm here for the Kool-Aid, and that was funny but inaccurate. I'm more like the Jim Jordan of trucking, just absolute nonsense coming out of my mouth, rapid fire speed. And the only reason I do it is to overload you with information to confuse you. And then you're like, yeah, I totally get what this guy is saying. So yeah, Jim Jordan of trucking, if you don't mind. I kind of treat my videos the way you sick fucks treat the uh, truck stop bathrooms. I basically just open a hole and spray and we see what fucking happens right so uh yeah i just wanted to clear up that little misconception i don't want people thinking i'm running a cult over here again i've been in a lot of trouble on youtube for running cults before so i gotta be careful i have to behave myself this time all right anyways we're gonna talk about my experience doing entertainment trucking and i'm gonna go over real quick real quick uh, how I ended up getting fired from that job um, and then uh, the, the reason I'm gonna tell that is because the channel was much smaller than we've grown the channel by I'd say at least 5,000 subs uh, since all that happened so I'm not gonna go into great detail but the fact of the matter is yes I got fired from that job um, so here's what happened as I understand it uh, within a day or two of me starting that job somebody already had the information on what tour I was going to be on and they started uh, putting that all over YouTube this is what tour Josh is on this is what band he's with and all those things and then uh, I'd say I wasn't on that tour very long I, I'd say maybe a month after that um, somebody had made a social media post uh, claiming to be me and uh, kind of you know talking about their experience doing you know entertainment trucking but like dishing up dirt on the band that that i was uh on tour with it wasn't real it wasn't real it was just all fucking made up and to to be clear i was actually sent the link to that post it was put in my comment section and i saw it and i just laughed i'm like oh yeah another one of these things you know uh people trying to get me in trouble at my job and i laughed about it well the next morning when i woke up it actually had went to the company that i worked for and all the way up to the band who uh needed me to show up for the the next show and then when i arrived uh terminated immediately <laughs> and and uh don't cry for me god damn it because uh it actually worked out really well for me because I that's when I really really focused in and said I think I could make better YouTube videos I think I could actually grow this channel and and I it motivated me to sort of insulate myself from uh, bullshit like that um, and we've done well we've done well so I mean I took a bad day and tried to turn it into something positive and sometimes that's all all you can do right um, but yes, it's it is a thing that happens. Um, there's people running around other platforms pretending to be me. It's 
fucking bizarre. Um, I don't really understand it. There's somebody over there, I guess, having such a hard time in life that they're like, you see that guy with 7,000 subscribers? He's living a little too high on the hog. We better knock him down a peg. And uh, it's fucking weird, and it's often referred to as cancel culture. Yeah, cancel culture. We don't like a guy's YouTube video, so... His children should go without, right? Because we, we should try to get him fired from that job. It's fine. It's just something I've come to accept as a fact of life with uh, being old this guy trucks is people are always gunning for me for some reason. I don't fucking know why. I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll just make another really good video if I get fired again, I guess, and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, but that is the story in a nutshell of uh, how I was fired from that job. And I was mad, mad at first. There was a video on this channel and I was fucking pissed that that had happened. Uh, I actually thought I was gonna shut down this YouTube channel and then I uh, kinda took a little while to think about it and uh, came back with a fucking vengeance if, if you want my professional opinion um, and just decided we're just gonna do better around here and that's that's just what we did. It just motivated me to try to do better. So um, in, in the end, it all worked out. So let's go ahead and talk about entertainment trucking and, and what I'm talking about. For me specifically, it was concert tours. Um, but you could do, uh, there's a whole world of entertainment trucking out there. Of course, there's plenty of concerts. Uh, there's there's wrestling. If any of you are into wrestling, you could go do that. I know a guy that's on my Snapchat. I think he's involved in motocross or monster trucks i've asked him and he's answered and i'm dumb so i basically forgot um but there's a lot of different ways nascar nascar if you're into that i i look like i should be into nascar but i'm actually not i look like a fucking hillbilly um so there's a lot of different things so i had um sort of got it as a recommendation through my YouTube channel. Somebody said, why don't you apply for entertainment trucking? And I started applying. I started applying to all the companies that had to do with concerts. And uh, one of them called me and I was honestly kind of shocked by that. I'm like, oh fuck, they called me. Oh God, that's crazy. And uh, they wanted to hire me right away for a tour that was starting and they just didn't have enough drivers for it. So uh, after about five minutes of thinking about it, I said, I'm gonna go ahead and jump on this because I was, um, I would say a little bit naive, but like that's how you get experience. You go try a bunch of different things. And I honestly, when I first thought about it and then applied and then they called me, I'm like, this is gonna be a life-changing experience. I'm gonna be hanging out with famous people. I'm gonna be doing all this crazy shit out there and uh, I jumped on that job right away and in hindsight I probably shouldn't have at all um, the videos were were boring when I was doing the entertainment trucking because I was very limited in what I could show I was very careful with uh, social media so I could only kind of talk about uh, the day and not show any of the stuff that was really going on it was kind of a fucking problem if I'm being honest with you but uh, immediately Immediately, I just realized my Swift hat is way too tight, uh, cutting off blood to my head. Let me fix that real quick. Jesus, I was starting to, I was about to pass out on you guys. I had, now this hat, Swift, we got to do better. Now I made it one notch bigger and we got this big old gap here. I don't know, man. I guess I'm just going to look ridiculous. That's fine. That's fine. But I feel better. I can see straight again after I just about killed myself just now with my Swift hat tightened too tight on my head. Anyways, immediately I realized I wasn't going to fucking like it. Um, I got there, like they had me run a freight load just for something to do while I was waiting to, for everything to start. And then I got back to the, um, to the yard and the whole crew that I was going to be running with was all there right and it was cool because they were you know drinking some beers they were uh barbecuing they were hanging out having a good time and and that part was pretty cool right that's honestly i think we should do more of that in truck stop parking lots whip out the barbecue grill and uh, and and hang out with people i got my camping chair around here somewhere i could hang out any minute i'm ready to go if fucking barbecue breaks out in front of the trucks I got my, my chair. I'm ready to go at a moment's notice. And I think that would be fun. Maybe we should do that sometimes, guys, huh? 
just I, well I guess I got to be the ringleader on that I guess I'll just start popping up a barbecue grill out front and see if I make new friends I don't fucking know that part was obviously cool though but um you know I had to talk to people which I fucking don't like I mean you probably can't tell because I make these YouTube videos but actually like talking to people in real life and like forming friendships oh that sounds fucking gross that's not something I'm interested in but the first thing that like kind of tipped me off that I don't think I'm gonna like this was everybody was kind of hanging out you know eating burgers and hot dogs and stuff and I went to walk away and I'm kind of an awkward little fucker, right? Like, I don't know how to walk away from a crowd. Like, some people just do it, and they, they're so majestic when they when they do it. And they can just excuse themselves from a crowd and come back into the crowd at any minute. I have to have a whole crisis in my head. Like, I'm like, oh, God, what do I do? I really need to take a piss or whatever it is I need to do. Do I just stand up and walk away? Do I stand up and go, well, I got to piss? Like, how do I leave this situation? So after sitting there awkwardly for, like, 15 minutes trying to figure out what to do, because I just needed to go outside and vape. I, I just got up and I walked away. And somebody went, where are you going? And my initial thought in my head was, mind your fucking business, uh, which probably wouldn't have been a good look if I had said it out loud uh, right away, right? But i that's when I realized, like, oh, fuck, this is going to be an everyday thing, isn't it? There's always going to be somebody going, what, what, where, are you, where are you going? What are you doing? And don't get me wrong. I like the guys I worked with, and uh, most of them. One of them I really didn't fucking like, um, and we'll talk about him later. But uh, and, and some of them might even still watch these videos. Like, I don't hate those guys by any means at all. Um, I'm a freight hauling trucker uh, for one one very important reason that I am is because I like to be fucking left alone let me do my job don't bother me I just want to sit here with my thoughts and and whatever and and do that if you don't fucking mind and I'm not interested in talking to people fuck all that god damn it leave me alone um so I was like this motherfucker is worried about where I'm going right um and then you know, the night ended, we all went to bed in our separate trucks. We didn't all pile into one. That would have been way too sexy for me to talk about on YouTube, of course, if we had done that. But, uh, so we get up the next day and, um, it was immediately just text messages flying from every direction, you know, lead driver saying, okay, guys, we're rolling out at this time and we're going to go here. Uh, you need to go to this truck stop and get your fuel and you need to go to this truck wash and get your truck washed. Here's the wash that you're going to get. Uh, and then when you're done with all that, here's the truck stop we're meeting up at at the end of the day. I expect you all there by certain time, whatever. Right. And that's all fine and good. That's exactly what that kind of trucking is and I should have expected that um, but we were all expected to move at a group as a group at all times right and I get it that's part of the job and honestly that is a lot of the appeal to trucking for a lot of truck drivers you know the ones that thought Smokey and the Bandit and Convoy were fucking documentaries. You know, those guys that think that that shit's real. They fucking would love the idea of running 12 trucks deep across the goddamn country, talking on our CBs to each other and all that shit. A lot of people would really like that. And if that's something you'd be interested in, entertainment trucking, yeah. You'd be running with however many guys down the road, just bullshitting all night on the CB, and you all run together. Um, and, and if you're into it, look into it. It's just not fucking for me right um and i noticed that if you would deviate from the route they told you to go even just a little bit your phone would ring <laughs> they'd call you like i i don't mean to be a dick but you could tell that uh the the like lead drivers were always involved in entertainment trucking because they would just take wacky fucking routes to get places like you know, an over-the-road freight hauler knows how to get around this fucking country, right? And knows the best ways to go about it for the most part. But uh, you get these, like, entertainment goofballs. And I remember we were going to L.A. from Denver, right? We were going to L.A. from Denver. It was around summertime, so the mountains aren't bad, right? So we could have just went I-70 all the way out to I-15, all the way into fucking LA, right? So this goofball comes up with the idea of we're gonna drop down I-25 all the way to Albuquerque, then we're gonna take I-40 all the way out to whatever the goddamn hell it is that drops into Phoenix, and then from Phoenix we're gonna take, I don't know, I-10 or whatever into fucking LA. And I 
didn't want to do that because <laughs> I, I don't follow directions well, apparently. And everybody left, and I just took off across I-70, right? Oh, yeah, I did not I got more than just a phone call from my lead driver asking me what the fuck I was doing. I got a call from the office, too, going, Josh, you're supposed to be rolling with everyone else, to which I responded, I didn't like their route. I thought it was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, they weren't they were not amused with me. I was probably gonna get fucking fired anyways because the shit really got on my fucking nerves if I'm being honest like uh, that's part of why I, I uh, was excited to leave Western Flyer. They were constantly micromanaging calling me 40 fucking times a day to make sure I was gonna get the load there on time. I want to be left the fuck alone. So far, Swift hasn't called me at all. They just send me a load and I go on about my business. I love it. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. But um, there was all that, you know, the um, the uh, constant like telling, micromanaging and things like that that was kind of problematic for me. I didn't like it. Um, and that's okay. That's my own fault. I blame me for that. I went into a team setting in trucking and then I didn't want to be a team player. I am the asshole in that situation. I can't even argue that. I just didn't fucking like it and that's okay. That's how it goes, right? Um, then uh, the thing I thought I was going to have a hard time with, I actually really enjoyed. I had a lot of fun with. For those of you that don't know, you're kind of almost expected to not look when you're backing in entertainment trucking, if that makes any fucking sense. You've got somebody behind you with a portable CB. You've got your CB on. Uh, depending on the place, you may have someone in front of you also. And you're backing into underground like facilities, parking garage type of things, things like that, to get down to docks that you don't have even the slightest idea where they are. Now, you can walk down there and get an idea, of course, but when you're in the truck, all bets are off. You don't know where the fuck you're at, right? Um, and they kind of strongly encourage you to just not even look. Don't even look in your mirrors. Just do what you're told, right? And I thought I was really going to struggle with that because I have been trucking for so long and I've backed into every goddamn thing all by myself for all these years. But I actually really fucking enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Just like you're just backing blind. You might as well put a blindfold on and just move the wheel the way they're telling you to do and, and do what they're telling you to do. And I found that to be fucking fascinating. We would back trucks into fucking crazy spots. I know I'm sounding like an old super trucker right now, but you did the shit blind. They told you what to do. And it was, it was a lot of fun. Actually, it was super fun backing into those spots, but they did overdo it. When you were looking at basically a wide open loading dock with fucking, you know, 200 yards in front of you to do a straight back. Oh, they'd be out there telling you how to back in still, right? But um, I guess one of the biggest problems I had was all the people, right? I said there was the one guy I didn't like. Um, that guy, uh, for lack of better term, was a big fat fuck, right? And he never shut his fucking mouth. He always had a goddamn opinion on fucking everything. You couldn't get on the CB like when we were all be rolling together, I would get bitched at all the time. Like, Josh, why aren't you talking on the CB? Well, because this big fat fuck won't shut up long enough for anybody to get on the CB. But he was like constantly in my fucking business. You know, um, we would go to eat because they do provide three meals a day, right? And before, when we got there in the morning, we would always have like two hours two or three hours to kill before we had to start backing in the dock. So we would go get us our breakfast, right? And I would go get me, you know, a little bit of eggs, a little bit of bacon, you know, your normal breakfast shit. I don't eat sugary breakfast shit. That is very rare if that ever happens. That's fucking gross in my opinion. Um, but, you know, I'd get me a little plate of food, right? And I'd go sit down. I'm happy. Got me some toast, some bacon, some eggs. Give me some salt and pepper. I think we're good to go here. We're good to roll. Like me some orange juice. Yeah, I like me some orange juice in the morning. That's some refreshing shit, isn't it? Yeah, not coffee or any. Coffee makes me shit myself, man. Like immediately. I'll take a sip of coffee. All bets are off, baby. I'm going. I'm going. Um, and it's always been like that. You guys have learned more about me shitting than you probably know about most people because I talk about it probably way more than I should. I was just looking down at my bucket while I was telling you that. My old faithful bucket that has saved my ass on a few occasions. Um, anyways, uh, I'd just be eating my food and the guy would sit down with his plate just fucking piled with food, right? Just disgusting. We could have put a fucking pig trough in front of this motherfucker and just filled it with, mixed all the food together and filled it and he would have been happy. But I didn't have an issue with that. But 
but because he was an asshole, then I did have an issue with it. So he'd be like, is that all you're going to eat? Yeah, that's all I'm going to eat. Well, you need to put some meat on you, boy. You're too skinny. No, I'm not too skinny. You're too fucking fat. Okay? God damn, leave me alone about my food. Like, I'm starting to get older, and I'm not, like, a fatty by any means. I think... I think last time I weighed myself, I'm like 155 pounds, okay? That doesn't sound like a whole lot, but I was up to 160 not that long ago. And as a smaller person that's always been pretty skinny, when you're like 160, it's a motherfucker to move yourself around. You're like, God damn, I'm out, out there trying to crawl around in trailers, climb up in trailers. I'm rolling around on the floor on my fat ass going, what the fuck is going on with me? I don't like carrying extra weight at all. It, I, I, when I got up to 160, I was like, I got to fix this, man. I know, I know that sounds silly to a lot of people because some people are like six feet tall and 200 pounds and they're, they're, they look just fine and they can move just fine and all that because 200 pounds of that height's pretty fucking normal, right? But at 5'6", you start getting up there around 170, 180, you're just a pudgy little fucker at that point, right? And I didn't like that. So yes, I do kind of care about like carrying extra weight because it's hard to move around I found when I'm 160. <laughs> I know that sounds silly but it's the truth god damn it. Um, so yes uh, I believe in like portion control and not eating everything because it's in front of me and the motherfucker would bother me every time I went to get food. Like god damn leave me the fuck alone. I'm gonna eat what I'm gonna eat and you're gonna mind your fucking business god damn it. Holy shit. Um, and it was really a pain in the dick is what it was, was just listen to this guy all the fucking time bitch about how much food I was eating. But like, then I would go get my, my backpack, my shower bag out of the truck. And I gotta be honest with you, I didn't, I wasn't up in other people's business there. I just did my own thing. But I can't think of a single time that I was on that tour that I saw one other person on the crew grab their shower bag and head off to the shower. I just dropped my vape again. I can't think of one time that I saw that happen. <laughs> kind of gross but oh, hey whatever I went every day and I'd go get my shower bag and I'd be walking in he's like what are you getting a shower yeah yeah I'm getting a shower well why, why are you doing that why did you just ask me why I'm getting a shower like so you're asking me why I won't eat all the food in front of me and now you're asking why I'm going to get a shower because I don't want to be you motherfucker I do not want to be you I I, I okay is that all right? God damn it. And like a lot of people, see, I, I should have said this earlier. A lot of people get really upset about my, my fat ass jokes on here about fucking with the fatties. I never fuck with the fatty that didn't fuck with me first, right? There's, um, there's a difference between being a, a, you know, a fatty. There's nothing wrong with being a fatty, but then there's also a fat fuck right? And a fat fuck is normally a fatty that's kind of an asshole. And fuck that guy. You're going to be an asshole and you're going to be a fat ass. I'm going to make fun of it. Okay. Does that work for you? If you're going to be a normal fucking person, just be a fat ass and who cares? No one gives a shit. But you're a fat fuck the minute you start fucking talking shit, running your fucking mouth. All right. <laughs> so anyways, that guy was a real, real pain in the ass, right? Um, but another part of it, like I said, a lot of this is my own damn fault, how my fucking mind works, right? Um, another part of it was we had, I, I think it was 12, 12 trucks on that tour, right? And everybody always wanted to do something, which is fine. You know, you should make friends. I did make some friends there. I don't, I think I talked to one still, um, but it's very rare that I talked to him. And I, but I felt like I was making friends there and you, yes, you should get out of the truck and go have breakfast or go have dinner. Or, or if you got the time you're sitting around, go have a few drinks with some of your friends. Absolutely. I think you should, but I couldn't even imagine being on like a bigger tour than what, what I was on. Um, because with 12 of us, your phone was always going off. Ugh, excuse me. I had me a little chicken sandwich for uh, lunch. Belching a little bit because I'm sexy. That's why. Anyways, um, uh, I mean, obviously my phone's always on silent, but it, it was constant. Like 
we'd be done like eight, nine in the morning and I would just be fucking exhausted. By the way, a lot of night driving. So if you're a night driver that likes to run in convoys and be told where to be at what time and all that, entertainment trucking will work for you. I'm not talking shit. I'm saying that that might be your, your kind of gig right there. Um, but it was just fucking constant. Hey bro, you want to come over here? We're having a drink. Hey bro, I'm over here having lunch. And it's like, oh fuck. Oh God. I just want to go to bed sometimes. Sometimes I just want to go to bed. And I think I got the least amount of sleep that I'd ever gotten in my life when I was doing entertainment trucking. Uh, those guys were fucking animals. I mean, it's like they never slept, I guess. I have no fucking clue. But they were constantly like up to go do something and all that. And um, th that's not a bad thing. It's just not my thing is all I'm trying to say. That's, that's really all I'm trying to tell you is it's just not really my thing. Um, so when I look back on it, um, I think it is cool that it's something I got to experience, something I got to see for myself. That's always cool. Experiences are fun, right? Um, but looking back on it, it's not something that I think I would ever do again, even for a lot more money. Because they, this company I was at was only paying like sixty grand a year, guys. It wasn't, it wasn't good money. It was I, I wanted to experience it, so I did. Um, but looking back, overall. I feel like it was a negative experience for me um, as far as my personality goes. Um, the, to wrap it all up, constant night driving, um, always, obviously it's a concert tour, right? So you have show times and all that stuff. So always being told where to be, when to be there. And if you deviate just a little bit and you didn't call someone and let them know, then they'll call you and figure out what the fuck you're doing, right? Uh, I stopped for a nap one day and I, I got a fucking earful over that and I was just tired I wanted a nap and I had plenty of time to get where I was going um, uh, what else um, you know if you like hanging out with people like every day yeah it's definitely a good thing that that is fun uh, me I like a break from that I don't mind hanging out with people but I like to spend time by myself most of the time if I'm being honest um, it's nice to hang out with people but give me like a two week break between you know, I'll go out. If you see me on the road, like we're done for the day and you want to go have a steak and a beer, I will definitely go do that. And then if you're another person that sees me the next day and you're like, hey, do you want to go hang out and have a steak and a beer? I'll be like, I just did that yesterday. Uh, I'm not ready for like another two weeks to like interact with people, if you don't mind. And uh, then I'll uh, then tough luck because no, I probably still would. I probably still would. But uh, I get. Um, just overloaded when I'm around people too much that I just need my fucking space and that explains why I do the kind of trucking I do just leave me the fuck alone let me go to work um, I guess I don't really have any other points I hope I laid out sort of my experience with entertainment trucking I didn't mean to lay it out in a way that like made it negative or positive but just how I felt about it and you're allowed to feel how you feel about it if it's something you're interested in or something you have done also so with that said that's it i'm gonna get this video uploaded for your entertainment bye now